Third John, the elder, as in found in Second John one, the elder, unto the well beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. So here is John writing to a saved Christian who is loved by John, so which means he would be well standing in the Lord. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Okay? So it's well for another Christian to wish another Christian to prosper and health and pray for those things and guide someone. It's perfectly proper. For I rejoice greatly. When the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. So, again, there are men and women that are traveling all about uh, Israel, Asia, Europe. And what they're doing is when they come back and report back to Jerusalem, when they meet Paul, they're reporting that, you know, this church, this person... This is what's going on. This is how they're doing. This is what they're doing. This is the fairness. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. And we saw that in verse 4 of 2 John. I rejoice greatly I found of thy children. Talking to the elect lady. So here are here is John. He's writing to his spiritual children as Paul would write to his spiritual children. And he's finding out the converts that were under him of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're still in the truth. They're still doing good. And that, that, that is a blessing. That, that is an honor for a Christian to hear that the people you were involved with that are saved, they're still in the truth. As we get closer and closer to the rapture, that would be more honoring and be more loving because they're falling off by the wayside. Remarkably. Beloved. Thou hast, I mean, excuse me, thou doest faithfully. That's a great statement. Faithfully. Whatsoever thou doest to the brethren, save people, and to strangers, not save people. Whatever he's doing, he's being faithful. He's making his promises so. He's making his life like he said it would be. Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church. So not only is he faithful, not only is he walking in the truth, but he's also have been testified by others, not of love, but charity, above love, his sacrifice, his giving, his care, his dedication to God and the church. Whom if thou being forward on their journeys, as they're going out, they're stepping out, they're leaving. After a godly sort, thou doest, thou do well. Thou shalt do well. There are people being stepped out, they're going. Maybe a mission trip, maybe they're, they're going somewhere. And Gaius is helping them. Gaius is guiding. Gaius is being faithful. He's being charitable to these people we therefore ought to receive such because that for I got turn around can't but that for this for that for, I'm getting all messed up here forgive me I know because that for his name's sake that would be Jesus no other name they went forth so here are people going out, and they're not going out in the name of X Bible Church, X Baptist Church, X Mormons, X Jehovah Witnesses. They are going out in the name of Jesus Christ. You got people today that are in colleges, are in seminaries. Sin, sin and I say that word right. And they're going out in the name of that church, in the name of that person. And the person may be even dead. 
but we're still going out in the name of this person. We are, uh, uh, let me think of a good example here. We are Methodists. Well, that's gone. That's dead. They've been buried. Why don't you go out in Jesus? For his name's sake. That's the name. That's the one. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. This is the motive. They're going out for Jesus. Now maybe they're not going out in the mission field. Maybe they're going out to learn the word. But whatever they're doing, they're doing it for Jesus' sake. And Gaius is helping them. Whatever help they would need, I don't know what it would be. They went for taking nothing of the Gentiles. Gentiles, unsaved people. They're not Christian. So they would not take anything from Gentiles, unsaved people. They rely completely on the church, Christians, and their love and dedication. We, therefore, ought to receive such. These people are being sent out that we might be fellow helpers in as to the truth. These are supporters. You'll get the credit. If these people you're sending out, if they happen to come by our way, and they need a rest overnight, and they need a place to stay, we ought to help them. If they need a meal, we ought to help them. We ought to strengthen them. We ought to be part in the ministry gaze that you have of these men going out for Jesus Christ. So, this is something good. We're to, support mission, we're to support missionaries that go in the name of Jesus Christ. And it's kind of funny because when you look at missionary cards, there's a picture of the family. There's their last name in big letters. Where's Jesus Christ? Oh, there, there's a scripture maybe at the bottom, at the top, right, left. There's scripture. But even Satan quotes scripture. What have we done to the name of Jesus Christ? I wrote unto the church. This would be another epistle that we don't have. But Diopatris, however you want to say his name, who loveth to have the preeminence. You can find a reference like this in Matthew 27, 18. Among them, the church receiveth us not what by the letter or by visit we don't know if i wrote the church down hey this guy Diotrephus, he wants to be somebody he is somebody it's all about him so we contacted him we made some kind of word whether face to face whether by letter and he wouldn't take us in he wouldn't help us but wait a minute Verse 7, you're sending people out. In verse 8, we ought to help those Christians. We ought to guide those Christians. But we're going to give an example of someone who's not doing it. Received us not. He won't invite anybody into his church to preach. Acts 20, verse 30. Why wouldn't he? Uh, the Bible doesn't say, but... What is his fear? Is he the fact that he is just so preeminent that nobody can be better than he is? Wherefore, if I come, this is John, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. Praying or pratting, that's gossiping, against us, the apostles, with malicious words. Imagine, here's a guy speaking against the beloved John the Apostle. Would you have some nerve? The one that laid upon the breast of Jesus, and this guy is gossiping about John. And probably other men. He said us, not just John. And there are people in church that gossip and talk about other people. And the thing is, let's look at what it says. He would not receive us. 
He won't even invite John in, but he sure can talk about it. Now, this is a day and age of no television, no telephones, no internet, no YouTube. So, the only thing he's going to get word on John is word of mouth and letters being passed before. So, he doesn't have the full reference of John that we can get of a preacher today. If, if there's a preacher or a man preaching about Bible, you can probably find everything you can want to find on him on the internet about his life and what he preaches and all that. But John, one of the twelve, one of the three that was in the inner circle of Jesus Christ, and here this guy has nerve to, to gossip about him. And not content therein. He's, he wants more. You've got to have more got lust according to what Paul says covetousness content not uncontent not content coveting lusting once more neither does he himself receive the brethren verse 8 he will not allow visitors come into his church it's all about him the preeminence And forbidding them that they for and forbidding them that would. No, you're not coming here. He's denying hospitality, which we saw Peter said show hospitality. And casts them out of the church. He's expelling people. This guy is a church wrecker. This guy is sowing discord among the brethren. This guy is a complete opposite of Gaius. This short little letter of 14 verses shows one good man in Christ and shows one man, rotten man in Christ. Compare the two. Lie them out. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. Diopathies. Now again, I mentioned in second epistle, beloved, that was the adjective given to John John the beloved of Christ and John is now using that term for Christians I think he would very well limit that term when you get the Christians today beloved follow not that which is evil but that which is good Gaius Gaius this letter is to you you're good this other guy He's terrible. This letter is what? It's being read by the Christians. It is being read to you by us on May 15, 2017, and it's still a strong message. There are people who are serving the Lord. They are helping men that are serving Jesus Christ. And there are people that, let's say you're traveling somewhere, wherever, maybe not named Jesus Christ, but and you know you're tired your car breaks down whatever between between point a and point b here's this church you pull and say hi we're bible believing christian you know you can see our car i mean we just love the jesus christ we've got bumper stickers all over hey get out of here wait we just need a help. just want to meet you know come sunday morning just get out of here you're not welcome take off no hospitality no love no care guy ain't safe and he's in the church and you know what's sorry about it it looks like there are people following him they're surely not following God through him we got the world praise pastor pray for our pastor always I'm a Dutrius, as they said, would say if they did in, in the uh, Corinthian church, you know, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus. Somebody's work, because this guy has a position where Christians come and he beats them out. He that doeth good is of God, Gaius, but he that doeth evil, dear Ophthesis, has not seen God. Now, if he is saved, he has no light. Demetrius, 
a third gentleman, three people in one little book. When was the last time Third John was ever opened up in a church? God's material has a good report of all men. All men saved or lost. First Timothy three seven. You can go down to the supermarket and say, "Hey, Demetrius, how is that guy here?" Well, he pays his bills. He, he, he's, he's very reliable. He doesn't steal. You go into the. Uh, the power company, which they don't have, but you go in the power company, how's he with his bill? And he pays it, and if he's a little bit over, he makes arrangements and, and follows those arrangements. The neighbors of Demetrius, how's your neighbor? Man, he doesn't bother us. He's real respected. We like him. He's always witnessing to us, but we like him. You can't find many Christians in churches today with a good report. All men. And of the truth, John 17, 17, truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, on the way to truth, sanctify him through thy word. Thy word is truth. We saw truth, 1 John. We see the children walking in truth, 2 John. We see this guy walking in truth, 3 John. So that's Christ. And of the truth itself, yea, and we, we also, John and his company, bear record and you know that our records too so we're telling the truth too Demetrius has that good report by everybody around saved and lost there are Christians out there who don't have a good record of Christians because that Christian is some kind of fault to them some kind of you know he, he's a uh, they don't trust him. They're afraid of him. But that man stands good. And he loves the Lord and wants to do right. Somebody who loves the Lord does right. A lot of people fear him. Especially churches. And we know that our record is true. Demas, Demetrius is a good guy. Gaius is a good guy. Neuropathies. <laughs> So you can take two men out of this short little book, 14 verses, and you can make your own outline. What must I do to be? What should I be? How should I be a good man? Here's two people. And scripture is scripture, like I said, 1 Timothy 3. You can lay the scripture out. You can match their opposites of what he wasn't, according to 1 John. What he wasn't, according to Peter. I had many things to write. But I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. <laughs> he said that in first and second John to the elect lady. But the Holy Spirit told him said, listen, I, I, write it, write this down. Second John, write about the deceivers. I want that in my book. I want that in my Bible. I know you wrote other letters. I'm not going to use them. I want you to write a letter. They're going to call it third John, but you don't know that yet. And I want you to talk about three people. Two good and one bad. That's going to be in my Bible. John did not know that. The Holy Spirit didn't say, Hey John, this is going to go in the Bible later. No, I don't think the Holy Spirit did that. This is just a letter, hey, I'm going to come and see you. I have something very important that I really won't need to say right now. Because Lord willing, I may not be there. Our life is, is just a vapor. We may die before we get there. Gaius, I want to write to you because I don't know. I plan on coming to you, elect lady. But, Lord willing, I may not make it. So, if by chance, if I don't make it, here's a short little note in case I don't make it. And that short little note has made it into the 66 books of the Bible. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen. Now notice the ink and pen. Now there's something I say. They'll say that Bible is written by men. Ink and pen. Now get it that way. Because the ink is the Holy Spirit and the pen is man. Man is the instrument that is held in the fingers while that ink that is writing is the Holy Spirit working. Ink and pen. 
Today we just shorten it because we have no Holy Spirit. We just use it. You got a pen? You anybody know where my pen went? Anybody see my pen? You got a pencil? We ain't got no ink no more. Because the Bible is finalized, it's sealed, it's done. We do not add any more ink to the Bible. And yet we got modern Bible people out there removing and writing in with their writing that's not approved of the Holy Spirit. But I trust I shall shortly see thee. I don't know. I have the plan. But God may defer my plans. But this is a vow of importance that I need to write to you. And we shall speak face to face like Second John. But I don't know. It may not happen. This is important. These two second and third epistles, very tiny book, but they're very important epistles that when we read them and study it, John says, I've got to get this down in writing. Because I may not see you face to face. These two books ought not be skipped. But I trust I shall shortly see thee. And we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. So John's surrounded by a, a group of Christians. Hey, wait a minute John. Before you close that letter, tell Gaius we say hello. Okay, our friends salute thee. Greet. The friends, your friends, the people where you are, by name. Hey, people, I just got a letter from John, the beloved John. And he says, hello. Now, when we gather, next time we meet in such and somebody's house or gay as house, we will read the letter openly before all. That's what would happen. They wouldn't say, open your Bible to the third epistle of John. They would say, we got a letter from John. And somebody would say, hey, you know, that's a very good letter. Can I carry that to my neighborhood? Can I copy that down so I can take it over here to this city? Because that's a very good letter. We got bad Christians in our city. Can we, can we write that down? And that's how the word made it into our Bible. It was read to the church, probably copied down by here, take it. So we have the third epistle of John. How to be right in the Lord? Two examples. The Bible says in the law where two or three are gathered, I mean, where two or three are a witness, it shall be established. You got this one guy who's not doing anything. Two against one, and the Lord wins. So.